In this lecture, we're going to go more deeply into understanding the causes of the development of disorders. We covered the diathesis stress model in our last lecture, and here we're just going to set the stage a little bit more. So looking at some of the preconditions from psychosocial and biological perspectives. In this content, um, I've divided it into three parts. And we have first the framework, and I'm going to offer you that from Bronfen Brenner's Bioecological Systems Theory. Part two, we're gonna look at psychosocial and psychological causes, um, setting the stage through some of the content you might've had in developmental psych, looking at developmental stages through Erickson and Sullivan's model, looking at parenting styles and attachment, parenting priors and abuse, and finally, the impact of peer relations, rejective, and how this fits into the hierarchy of needs. And then in part three, we'll take a quick peek at biological and genetic causes, genes, heredity, chromosomal abnormalities, gene environment relations, temperament and gene environment interactions, and neuronal and hormonal anomalies. So let's begin with Bronfenbrenner. So he um, was interested in the factors that impact a child. And he calls his model the ecological systems theory, which is a system of interacting factors to explain the development of a trait or behavior. And later this prefix bio was added as more understanding of the role of biology in all of this came to the forefront. So each child has a unique makeup and we're going to start here before we get to the systems and this is maybe um, a bit about that bio piece. So we're all born with a certain set of chromosomes with a certain set of genes um, that are locations on those chromosomes that we inherit from our parents. And so within this inheritance process there can be um, just traits that we get. There can be mutations, things that can go wrong, or abnormalities like an extra chromosome. So all of these things can impact behaviors and characteristics. Then we also have neurochemistry, and this varies with, with uh, time and with situations. So we could have functional um, anomalies, such as um, differences in neurotransmitters um, or degradation of certain neuronal strands. So that's all related to the function, the electrical signaling, signaling that leads to behavior. And there can be structure abnormalities as well, which is different, um, say different frontal cortex, different limbic system. Um, so the actual structure or the physical parts, um, regions of the brain. And then we have an endocrine system, which promotes, um, which has hormones, um, which are chemical messengers that flow through the blood seam and promote more gradual changes, ebbs and flows. And these include the sex hormones, testosterone and estrogen. And these can have an impact on uh, our traits, our personality, our moods, and a range of other factors, growth. And then of course, we can put this together in something we call temperament, which is like, um, the, the personality that you're born with, the fact that two babies are very different in their responses to situations, their outgoingness, the extent to which they approach new situations. And so we consider all that to be temperament, which is sort of a stable uh, personality that you're born with. So um, the first system then that he says impacts this, we have the child in the middle with all their unique characteristics. And then we come to the micro system. And those are all the factors that are in this child's immediate environment. So what, con what conditions exist in this child's world that um, directly interact with the child and impact them? So we often think of young children because they're hugely impacted by this micro system. So for example, we have parents um, siblings, pets, teachers, peers, all of these are interacting directly. We sometimes wonder, you know, pets, but pets do indeed have direct interaction with a child. 
um, and uh, maybe cause them to feel warm or comfortable or fearful. Um, siblings, birth order, um, how much time do the parents spend with you? The parents themselves, what kind of parenting style do they use? What school do they send you to? And how does that result in teachers interacting with you? Or what about your peers in that school? Um, they are impacting you directly, promoting or rejecting certain characteristics. And within this, things that can go wrong might include things like abuse. If the parents are abusive or neglectful, um, that would be a pretty serious impact. Um, if, uh, if divorce occurs, well, we'll talk about this a little bit more because this might not directly the divorce itself might not uh, be an engaged thing with a child, but rather an engagement between the two parents. Nevertheless, the fact of it happening in that immediate microsystem environment can impact the child. Um, peer rejection is a microsystem factor. This is a direct interaction with a child or adolescent, a parenting style. And you can see I've listed some of these over in here. The parents, um, the doctor, or whether there is a doctor, uh, neighbors. Um, so are the neighbors kind and accepting of the child? Do they make the child feel safe or threatened? Siblings, the church. Um, that uh, The church itself is part of the structure of the child's world, but the interactions within the church. Is the child meant to feel shame or meant to feel love? How is that church engaging with the child? And um, so it does include like the organizations to the extent that they directly interact with a child. So the classroom would include the all the peers and kids and principal and whatever's interacting with a child. The neighborhood to the extent that the neighbors are interacting with the child. And these factors are bi-directional. So the child has these set of traits. So if the child is very quiet and calm, that might tend to elicit a quiet, calm parenting style. And in turn, that parenting style might reflect back on the child and impact how they how they emerge. But if the child is really difficult or confrontational or easily frightened, something like that, that too has an impact on the parents and how they react to the child. So it affects their parenting style. Um, it affects the way the peers interact with that child. And so these are bi-directional relationships. The traits that the child is born with impact factors in the microsystem and the microsystem factors impact the child. And we include media here now because that screen time is directly interacting with a child. Is the child watching whatever they want on TV? Well, that's a direct engagement with a child. Um, and um, we'll stop there and move along. And there's that bi-directional thing. These things go in both directions. That little arrow that appeared from the child to the microsystem and back. Um, so the exosystem is the larger social structure. So I think of an exoskeleton as being the outward structure in which the body exists. We might think of exo as being the structure of the child. So the interactions within the exosystem, and this is this green layer, are indirect. Notice we didn't touch the mesosystem yet. So these are indirect, the environment in which the child lives. They impact the child's development because of some way they impact the microsystem. So the child might not interact, for example, with the parent's boss at work, but the way the boss treats the parent impacts the child. Is the parent stressed out when they come home? Um, is there enough money for the family? All those things impact the child. So the parent's employer is the first example. The school system. How rigorous is the school system? How much do they value competitiveness? Um, do they have the resources they need? Do they hire teachers who adhere to a certain philosophy? So that's the way that the structure impacts the child. Um, the political system that the child, do they have the freedom to, to speak, to move? Um, do they feel a sense of autonomy and empowerment? Healthcare options are part of the exosystem. So even if the family has available options for care, are those good options? Are they getting the best 
treatment that's possible. Um, is it is it a really big expense to get health care for a child and so maybe they don't get enough health care? So these are all part of exosystem. The economic system is it um, very um, focused on profit or is it focused more on equal distribution of wealth? These things can have an impact. Law enforcement can have a huge impact. So as the law enforcement system has an attitude toward residents, well, even if the child doesn't directly interact with law enforcement when they're young, the parents will have a, you know, the parents may feel fear, they may feel protected by law enforcement, and so it impacts the child in that way. And so looking at some of these popping up in the green there, the health options, the school system, uh, mom's boss, the political system, again, the school system. And so now we move along and we talk about this layer in the middle, this mesosystem. So the mesosystem is the interactions between aspects of the microsystem and aspects of the exosystem. So um, for example, what do the parents think about the schools? Or how does the parent get along with the teacher? Now, if your parent is a teacher in the school, that could have a big impact on you because your teacher will know your parent very well and may treat you differently. So that's a way in that your parent's relationship to your teacher impacts you. And we might also say that um, the connection between law enforcement even if the child isn't impacted by law enforcement, if the parents are having frequent negative interactions with law enforcement, the child is experiencing that and learning from it indirectly. Um, divorce happens within the microsystem. The two parents are both impacting the child, but maybe it also, and so that interaction between the parents, I would consider part of the mesosystem um, because hopefully the child is not involved directly in this fighting. Um, but they're still impacted by these interactions between the parents or by a sibling who is getting into a lot of trouble. And so maybe this child isn't impacted by this sibling who's breaking the rules and causing tension in the parents, but that interaction is having an impact. Maybe this child comes home and there's the sibling fighting with the parent and the child boom, retreats into a private space and, and doesn't feel this comfort and love that one might feel in the home. So that's the mesosystem, and it pops up here with this arrow showing the interaction between these two systems. And you might be thinking, how does this relate to abnormal psychology? Well, all of these factors create these diatheses. So the, the, creating the conditions in which a disorder might emerge. So socioeconomic status, that creates a heightened level of stress throughout the home throughout the situation that the child is raised in. And that stress becomes a formation point for the emergence of a disorder. Um, or these reactions with these interactions with law enforcement. So maybe these interactions set the stage where a child might develop a conduct disorder later and get arrested or violate the law or things like that. Um, so this is the idea. So these are like the diatheses, setting the stage for the emergence of a disorder. The macro system refers to cultural values, customs, and laws. So this is the much bigger setting in which this child is raised. So for instance, in the dominant Western culture, it says parents should be solely responsible for raising their children. And so we have homes that consist of mom, dad, children, and perhaps both parents are working. And so this child develops, is left alone a lot without another loving family member present. So that's dominant Western culture, which has maybe this isolated, solitary sense. Um, but other cultures really believe that raising a child is the responsibility of the parents and of the extended family and of other people in the community or clan. And that's a very different sense of how a child might be impacted by their culture and have many adults and caring individuals to whom to turn 
to help them grow and develop. So in this Western culture, there might be very little help for parents. So parents might be alone in their home wondering what to do with their child during the pandemic. Many parents had this trouble, had this challenge, and there might, in a culture that says, hey, it's up to you parents, not up to anyone else. There might be very few structures to support them at this time. And this might result in things like neglect um, or abuse. Um, so again, this Western belief in individualism, competition, self-sufficiency, materialism, um, you know, the expectation when I was growing up is that at 18, you would leave the home and you would not come back. And I still know parents who, who believe this and other parents in, in the very reverse of that, the expectation is that the people would stay within the home as they grow up and maybe even raise their own families within the same home as their parents. And so this really impacts how, how much support, how much of a nest individuals have. Um, so if a child, a young adult is developing depression or emerging with other symptoms of a disorder and they're booted out of the house at 18 or maybe not booted out, but just expected to be out on their own at 18, then they might have a very um, hard time dealing with or getting support for the disorder. Um, on the other hand, if they're always within the home and they stay within the home as adults and the home is dysfunctional, well, maybe that would tend to promote a disorder. So either way, these cultural factors impact. And we'll talk a little bit more about how culture impacts how people experience disorders and how they um, how the disorder progresses and even how they respond or react to the disorder. So that would be part of the macro system. And um, I have a few of these listed here, individualism, uh, greed, part of sort of a Western framework, gender roles, what's expected of males and females, our sexual variants, something that a person is helped to understand or something that they're rejected for, part of the culture very often. How do we define success? Part of the culture, if success is defined in a, in a way of, say, having a content life and a loving and giving love to one's family, that's very different from when success is defined in material terms and financial terms. Independence. And so now we move into the chrono system, which is the time in which a person lives. So this could be like a historical thing, living in the 1800s versus living now, and how this impacts development and what conditions might emerge. They might be very different in the 1800s because of the very different environment. But we also have a lot of rapid change happening around us all the time right now. I think even if you're a 20 year old, if you're a 20 year old now, you grew up with technology, but even you didn't grow up with the ubiquity of technology, the omnipresent of tech, the fact that if you are having a bad experience at school with your peers, they can harass you by your phone at all hours of the day and night. That comes up as maybe a little bit newer. Um, or just the fact that an expectation seems to arise that individuals would always have their phone with them and thus they would always respond quickly to other people's demands. To what extent does this impact how well we can say have quiet time to reflect or meditate or walk or settle down from all the social engagements of the day? Um, another example is living through the events that we've all lived through. We are all now a cohort together sharing this experience of COVID-19 and wearing masks and keeping distant from people and avoiding touching people. Well, this has a huge impact. We can think about the COVID babies who were born around the time that COVID began and have very limited social interactions in their young lives. How does that impact them? It's not necessarily harmful or negative. I'm not suggesting that, but nevertheless, it is something that happened within the Corona system that impacts their development. 
And we can think about post 9-11, just the fact that security, now we accept a lot more invasion of our privacy. And disinformation, such as the fact that on our political spectrums, right versus left, we have abundant information that isn't true, and we no longer share common facts. So these are all part of the chrono system. And again, bringing it back to the development of disorders, well, could the fact of living in this chrono system with constant social pressure via your phone, could this create increases in anxiety? And even increases in isolation because the connections are virtual rather than personal and physical. Um, could this prevalence of disinformation create almost a sense of not knowing what's true or not trusting the world around you, a little bit of paranoia? And could it promote more um, paranoid kinds of responses or paranoid kinds of disorders? So this is the framework for what we're going to talk about here, and we can consider all of these things to be diatheses. Um, and I put some of those up in the pink level here.